It's a new day. I'm wearing the same clothes though. Um, today, plan on taking care of a few things on the DRZ, change the oil, dump out the gas in there, clean the air filter, and just get generally everything cleaned up so that once our new parts get here, then uh, everything is quick and easy to go on. At the moment, I've got to I've got to work out of my shed here. It's so freaking hot in there. It's it's ridiculous. It's uh, Montana in the middle of summer. I think you can see in the background there, we got wildfires in our backyard, but nothing's burned down here, so we'll go ahead and take care of everything on the DRZ. All right, first things first, we are going to get this oil out of here. You don't have to take the skid plate off of this thing. Uh, the big oil drain bolt is right underneath there. It is a size 17 mil. Then we need to get to the oil filter. Because that little bolt right there got uh, absolutely nailed. It's stuck on the end of these threads here. See how the, these other caps just came right off. Our replacement oil filter, I usually go with uh, k and products. The filter replacement number um, for this is KN132. And the way it inserts, we got that end and that end. The, uh, the open end there inserts like so. Cover back on. I think I forgot to mention. 10 mil is the size of these nuts. Let's fill this bad boy up with oil. It's a Suzuki, but we're gonna use some Yama Lube. Everybody's got uh, an opinion about what oil you should use and and you know what, I don't really care. So on the side of the bike here, it says 850 milliliters. That's only um, the amount of oil you're supposed to put in there if you only change, or only drain the oil out and do not replace the filter. It is 950 milliliters or one US quart um, if you change the filter and drain all the oil. Here's 500 cc's of uh, golden liquid. Here's another 450. Cheers. Started up a little idle for like three minutes. They got a little sight glass right here below the uh, rear brake lever. So just make sure you're level. And obviously, you got your two tick marks that are full up top, low. As long as you're somewhere right in between there, pretty good. We're sitting level right about there, and we're midway. Next, we're gonna drain all the fuel out of here, so Petcock set that to off while we uh, remove this hose. This hose goes from the uh, Petcock down to the carb, so. You need to wiggle this little clamp off of here. You might have a little bit of a uh, fuel spilling out but yep, just a little bit if you have a longer tube you can stick that um, to the petcock open the fuel and just drain everything out so there we go I'm not pissing in the bucket that's all the fuel draining out Proof. If the uh, fuel starts to dwindle and uh, comes to a stop, even then take your petcock, switch to reserve. Should dump out the rest of the fuel. This gas it doesn't smell bad, so might just use it in my lawnmower or something. So there we have it, all the gas drained out of there. Now 
obviously toss your hose back on the carb there. Good to go. Now we can put some nice fresh gas in there. Now let's get to the air filter. Now you do only need to take just uh, just one side of the plastics off to get to it, but I plan on taking all these plastics off anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and strip all this stuff off of here. Here's the damage that uh, that exhaust has caused. It's basically just a bunch of melted plastic over the exhaust and I think that little seal right there is broken. That's where the exhaust is coming out of. So I'm not going to get the best performance running that thing. like just the one Phillips head screw will take care of everything. This thing doesn't look too dirty, but it is extremely dry. Since I don't have any other air filter for this thing, I think it's in pretty good condition anyhow, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this guy and call her good. So what I do with my air filters, um, first when I take them off, I go ahead and rinse them out in the uh, in the sink. Get any heavy debris, get any of the uh, heavy debris off of them. And so this is what I use: this Maxima air filter cleaner. And just work it into your filter. I usually just use a Home Depot bucket and a hose. I mean, just a quick rinse and a clean, and it's bright yellow, as opposed to that dark orange color that we had going on a little bit ago. Um, you do want to let this sit in the sun and dry out properly. All right, so my air filter's all completely dried out. What I use is this Maxima Fab One uh, spray-on air filter oil. Basically here, coat this whole thing. And then just massage it in. Just wanna make sure that we got coverage everywhere, uh, but we don't want to over uh, oil this filter. And then just run through, look for any spots like Looks like right there, maybe, that are uh, light spots. That looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this back on there. Pop this guy back on. Toss it back in there. Just make sure that the filter's you know, sitting nice and flush up against the box on this side over here. Hey, Kimbo! Hey! Kimbo! Buddy, come on! So that noise that you just heard was uh, my little dog, Kimbo. He's a, he's a pit bull lab mix, and uh, he got his hind legs stuck in between uh, some boards up here on our deck, and damn near broke his leg. So, now that that's all handled, air filter, we got it on there. Wing nut, it's all tight. Okay, seal, we got a solid seal around the whole thing. You don't need to do anything else. 
Put your cover back on, line that up, and screw this back in. There you go. Simple enough. They are aftermarket rental bars, but I'm a, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the old pro tapers. Maybe if I find a pair of cheap ones, I'll, I'll throw them on there. Peel it down. Push those down, and then it comes up. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of those little reflectors on there, so I'm going to get rid of those. Back one's busted off, side one's busted off. I think that would make a really good plate holder. So there's our bracket. Um, you know, I could mount the plate way back out there. I'm not a big fan of that because it always catches on everything usually. On my CRF I've got it mounted up under there. Here I'll show you. You can see in there and that looks perfect. It never gets in the way. I can mess around with that a little bit. I'm always down for custom things as long as they're done right and not uh, shitty. So under here, this giant uh, bolt here that holds the exhaust in place, it's a 12 millimeter. Holy shit, is there a lot of tension on that? Ugh. Alrighty. Look at this nasty thing. Now we just wait for our uh, FMF pipe to get here. So here's what uh, got melted. The sides are supposed to look the same. There you go, hook stock. Kinda, right? Well, I think I'm going to call it a day. I'm um, all hot and sweaty, and um, as far as the bike goes, got her all stripped down, and uh, ready for the new parts. I've got all the plastics off. I'm gonna go sand out all the all the uh, rough spots on them and, and scratches, and, and this is the, uh, the side from the exhaust. It was all, those were all just melted glob holes there, and it was all black, but I think, I don't know, it might still look cool if I uh, round out the edges there and, and make it look clean. Some little type of cheetah spot on there or something. I don't know. But, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll be back soon, and uh, a bunch of new parts, and uh, some install videos, so. Stay tuned, subscribe, peace.